Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously I was talking about the life and career of Richard Castle, or at least what we know about these. In the second quarter of the 18th century, Castle was the most in-demand architect working in Ireland. Today I want to look at one of his country houses. I remember 40 years or so ago, the late Mariga Guinness telling me about an extraordinary house in County Sligo, immediately behind which had been built a vast factory. The story seemed too improbable to be true, and Mariga was, after all, on occasion prone to exaggeration. But in this instance, she was telling the truth. It's easy to see why, in the early 1730s, General Owen Wynne should have chosen this site on which to build a new residence following his purchase of some 14,500 acres in the area at the start of the previous decade. Across a long, wide plain of pasture, the entrance front faces the mass of that geological curiosity, Ben Bulban, while to the rear, the ground gently descends through ancient woodland to the shores of Loch Gill. Hazelwood is typical of the Palladian style fashionable in Ireland at the time of its construction. The ashlar-fronted central block of three storeys over basement is joined by arcaded quadrants to two-storey wings. Above the north front's pedimented entrance, inset with a carving of the family's coat of arms, there's a splendid glazed aedicule with ionic columns and pilasters flanked by round-headed niches. Meanwhile, the south front boldly proposes a Venetian door below a Venetian window. The building's sense of significance is increased by both entrances being accessed via sweeping flights of steps. The interiors must have been similarly superlative, and even after many years of neglect, enough of the decoration remains to indicate their original appearance. The main entrance hall has recessed arches on its walls, above which hang plasterwork swags and a deep dentalled cornice. A central doorway leads into the south-facing library, which contains similar ornamentation, and from here one passes through a succession of other reception rooms. Upstairs is equally splendid. A massive staircase hall leads via a coved archway into the first floor landing, the ceiling of which is open to the galleried second storey. The whole series of spaces was once lit by a glazed octagon, at the moment covered over, but one hopes it will be opened again to let in natural light once more. Most of the rooms have lost their original chimney pieces, replaced by others of a later date, since the winds were not averse to making alterations, some less happy than others. A two-storey, three-bay extension on the southwest corner of the building, dating from around 1870, fundamentally disrupts Castle's meticulously planned symmetry. Still, whatever about the wind's modifications to their property, these were as nothing to what would follow once Hazelwood passed into the hands of others. The winds were never absentees, nor did they seek titles or honours, and during the Great Famine they lowered their tenants' rents. In other words, in many respects they were model landlords. The last male win to live at Hazelwood, the sixth Owen of that name, died in 1910, leaving four daughters, the eldest of which had married a Percival of nearby Temple House. She and her husband lived in Hazelwood until 1923, when they left the house, thus ending a family link going back two centuries. Having stood empty for seven years, the building was acquired by a retired tea planter who carried out essential repairs before selling house and estate to two government bodies, the Forestry Department and the Land Commission. After serving for some time as a military barracks, in 1946 the house and immediate surroundings were offered for sale by the Land Commission with the very specific condition that the new buyer must demolish the buildings, remove all materials and level the site. Somehow days before the auction was due to be held, this stipulation was withdrawn and Hazelwood sold for use as a psychiatric hospital. Shortly afterwards, for no apparent reason, 
the original staircase was taken out of the house. Much worse was to follow. In 1969, Hazelwood was sold to an Italian company called Sneer, which made nylon yarn and which built a factory for 500 employers on the estate. Now, it would have been perfectly easy for the company to have constructed that factory at some distance from the house, perhaps concealed by a belt of trees. But instead, they erected it directly behind the house itself. In 1983, Sneer's business closed down, and four years later, the factory was sold to a South Korean company which produced videotapes. Not surprisingly, given changes in digital technology, in 2005, this too went out of business. Meanwhile, as the house began to slide into decay, Hazelwood was sold to a consortium of predominantly local businessmen, who, in 2007, applied for permission to build, amongst other structures, 158 detached houses and 54 apartments in four large blocks. A few years later, the economic crash occurred. The consortium members became mired in litigation amongst themselves and the future of Hazelwood was once more uncertain. The situation began to look desperate and then, late in 2014, Hazelwood and a surrounding 80 acres was sold to a new owner who came up with a plan to make the place viable. That plan envisages a whiskey distillery installed in the former factory and the house restored to serve a variety of purposes, all intending to engage with people who come to see Hazelwood and to enjoy its beauty. It's a long-term project, but already a lot of work has been undertaken to restore the house and the owner's aspirations are that when all the work is completed, Hazelwood will once more thrive. The new whisky brand is called Athru, an Irish word meaning change or transform. Thanks to this ambitious scheme, the fortunes of Hazelwood have changed for the better and its transformation has begun. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. In the next episode, I want to look at another house believed to have been designed by Richard Castle. This one with a less happy history, I'm afraid. I look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye. Thank you.